Hello, this is GeoTechLand, and today I'll be looking at Manjaro Deepin. And really, with this OS, I'm going to be reviewing the Deepin desktop environment. I actually tried using Deepin 15.9, but I really couldn't get it to work as a live session or even as a virtual machine. So I thought, well, Manjaro Deepin may be pretty close enough. And it is because um, I did play around a little bit with the actual Deepin OS. And I kind of got to see that in general, it's probably pretty close to this, um, to this Manjaro Deepin version here. So the most unique feature of Deepin is that you can change the desktop mode. So right now it's set to kind of like the Mac uh, style uh, layout here. But if you just right click the dock and click on mode, you can change it to efficient mode. And this will give you a more Windows 10 like environment here. And I think this is um, something that every desktop environment should do now by default, like just let you at a click of a button, go from a Windows 10 type of layout to a Mac OS layout or to a di completely different layout. Um, or even a Windows XP layout. Um, there really is no no limit here. And we've seen this with Zorin. I think Zorin does it better because its settings are a little bit more intuitive. Like you can go you know, to the launcher, click on settings and go to the theme and, and just click which mode you wanna change. Whereas on Deepin, the only real way to do it is to right click and hit mode. Um, but the fact that this lets you do it in the first place is very good. I think it's the future. Now, even with the Windows 10 mode, the start or the launch here, it gives you that sort of GNOME 3 type of uh, layout here where this is more made for like a tablet or very tablet friendly. So even if you're a Windows 10 fan, you may not like it still, even if it's in um, this efficient mode here. And then you can make changes here. Now, the other unique thing about Deepin is its settings. And f this sort of um, settings menu, I have mixed feelings about it because I think this would be cool, the sidebar, but only to change some things like, um, like sound, you know, the typical things, pretty much the things you find here. But if you want to change like icons um, or theme here in this case, you have to do it through here. And, and although it looks kind of good, I don't know if, if I'd prefer, I think I would just prefer it if I can just open up a typical box and just change it through there. Um, so I would rather this be in a regular menu, but it does look nice and And at least the settings menu, again, lets you easily change icons. Like there's a whole section of icons that you can change. So right now I'm using Compass. So it's not even uh, Deepin's default. So I'm going to switch to Deepin's default here. Just to give you a better taste. Because I think Deepin's default isn't too bad. In terms of the icons themselves. The power of this desktop environment is that it gives you tons of choice. It includes many multiple ones by default. It doesn't try to limit you to its own icon set here. But I'm going to go to the Paprius icons because these are the ones I'm used to the most now. Um, now there is criticism though in in some of the default apps. Um, I still I think it's uh, there's good things and bad things of having default apps like that are specifically made by, let's say for example, Deepin. But I feel that if you're a newbie to Linux, you, you may think screen recording on Linux is what this is here. And I tried screen recording using this, but it was like, it's not the best. It's a, uh, you really can't change it. It's very limiting. And I'm always, I'm always afraid that a newbie to Linux may be put off by that where there are better tools like 
OBS and simple screen recorder even um, as you can see here so that's the one the criticism it's something elementary OS does and even I think Zorin OS does it includes some default apps and I'd rather just them use the more commonly used apps like maybe Caden Live, um, OBS, because it's very popular even on Windows. I think it's easier for newbies to Linux to transition to, uh, to from Windows to Linux. The other thing that I want to comment on is um, Deepin's uh, theme, like its own actual theme that you can see in the file manager here. It's okay. It does kind of look like a, a mix of Mac and Windows 10. And I think there's even a, a dark mode here, so it could easily let you change the dark mode. Um, now, there there is one little thing here, though, is that when you change the theme, like the shell to this, not everything will switch like this stays the same because this is all deep in. But other things, other things will change, like like the Firefox here. The, the shell, if it did change to dark, and so I don't like that, that it's not uniform. Now, the other good thing that a lot of people may like is that you can see icons here, whereas on GNOME, um, it's not really, you kind of have to work around to get icons to the show on the desktop using extensions you can make them large you can make them small you can make them medium so that's pretty good that again lets you easily choose and even these icon sets as you saw you can change to large i prefer the icons here pretty big and interestingly enough when you put it in this mode to change like the Wi-Fi settings on GNOME, usually you'll see them up here, but with this, it lets you change it here. I think this is okay. I don't know if I prefer it this way. And the last thing is that, of course, you can change the location from top to bottom to the sides. Although it won't look good here, I think. So overall, Deepin, again, is one of, um, they're doing a lot of good things with this desktop environment. Again, overall, it's it's a very mixed bag, though. I like that you can change the modes, but I don't like that the settings are all limited to just using this little sidebar. Although it looks beautiful, it's not really productive. Other than that, they give you a lot of choice, and you guys should check it out. You guys could probably try installing Deepin. It may work better than a live session or in a virtual machine, but I've had issues with uh, Deepin. So maybe um, Manjaro Deepin may be better for you and work better for you. Other than that, though, thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.